Hi, I'm Paul, and this is The Golf Show. Hey everyone, I'm Paul Hemley. Welcome to The Golf Show. Unfortunately, we're still in lockdown in the UK, which does restrict the content we can create. So this week's episode is about what's in my bag. We're going to look at what clubs I've got in the bag and what equipment I've got in the bag. If you're an existing subscriber, thank you very much for your support. I really do appreciate it. If you are new to this channel, I would ask you to please hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. That way you're not going to miss any of the great content we're putting out there each week. Okay, that's more than enough from me. Let's get on with the golf show. In researching this episode, I've been watching a lot of what's in the bag episodes on YouTube, and I've got to be honest, most are pretty dry, pretty boring, and they go on too long. There's far too much of, oh, I love my three wood, oh, I love my four iron. Well, there's none of that in this episode. In fact, if I say the word love at all, I'm going to give £10 for every time I say the word love to my favourite charity, which is Dreamflight. So keep me honest on that one, and we'll keep a record on the screen, okay? So perhaps before we talk about what's in the bag, we should talk about the bag itself. Well, I do own three bags. Well, that's what I tell Rachel. So let's have a look at those. Well, the one you're going to see the most in the golf show is my PXG tour bag. Absolutely love this bag. Mega quality, really well made tour bag. You're also going to see me out on the course with my PXG carry bag. Nice stand bag, really well made, nice and light. Really like that bag, you can see that a lot. And then my favourite bag is this one, the Jones Sunday bag. This is the utility trooper one. You can carry it with one strap there. It's also got a second strap. And we've got a couple of pockets, really light, very simple. Retro, classic style, really like that. Sort of modern take on a, on a classic style. Um, I'm not using this this time of year because obviously there's no stand on it, so when you put it down, it is going to get wet, then you're going to get wet when you pick it up. Okay, that's the bag. Now let's have a look at what's in the bag. So it's the start of 2020. This is the first ever what's ever bag I've done. Everything in the bag at the moment is PXG. I'm not paid by PXG. The golf show isn't funded by anybody. We're totally independent. It's just uh, these are the clubs I've been fitted for. I've had these clubs a little while and I love them. I don't think I'm going to change many clubs this year, although there are some great new drivers out on the market. The Ping G25 Max looks great, as does the new Callaway Epic, and obviously there's a the tailor-made Sim 2 and the uh, Titleist TSI range. So I'm going to try all of those. Whether it's going to be enough to dislodge this baby out of my bag, I don't know. But I just wanted to make it clear that I'm not paid by anybody to have these clubs. So let's start off with the driver. And first off, let's start off with the head cover. I had this made for me by Mark and the guys at Hazard Golf in Shipley in Yorkshire. They've very kindly got this to me in time for this review. I think one of their staff had to walk through a snow drift to get to the post office on time. So I really appreciate that, guys. Loving this and loving supporting local businesses. As to the driver itself, I'm playing the PXG 811XF. I've had this in the bag for about 18 months. The inspiration for this club came from the American muscle cars. So something like that. That's pretty cool. I've got the even flow. 6.5x 75 gram blue shaft in this. I've also got that in my three and five fairway. I've got the Golf Pride grip on there with four rolls of tape, and I've got the shot scope system in the butt of all my clubs, and we're going to see that in a future episode of the Golf Show. This is a 10 and a half degree driver. It's set on the big up setting, which means it's going to be playing at 12 degrees. I was fitted for this by the guys at PXG. It's a great driver, it's the best driver I've ever had. At the fitting, they put all the weights in the heel, as you can see here. That's to uh, help me keep the ball straight. Obviously, my natural shot shape is left to right, so those weights are going to help me there. Now, this club is called the 0811. Okay, now, Dr. Bob Parsons, who's the founder of PXG, is a former US Marine. He served in Vietnam, and all the PXG clubs have got a number, and that number corresponds to the US Marine Corps number for various Marine roles. So the 0811, is the Field Artillery Cannoneer. So that's quite appropriate for the driver. Next up, I've got my three fairway, and I've got another funky head cover on that, Remove Before Flight. I thought that looked pretty cool. This was made by Rose and Fire in California. Really nice quality head covers there. This is the 341 X model from PXG. Again, very similar looking to the, the style of the crown on the, uh, on the driver. 3411 in the US Marine Corps is for the mortar. So the mortar men that would fire the mortars at the enemy. And this is set at 15 degrees. On to the five wood. Well, let's have a look at the PXG head cover. This is the cover you get with the club. Really good quality head covers from the OEM. This is the best quality head cover I've ever received with a club without having to sort of buy one separately. Again, it's a 341 model, the mortar man. 
Similar looking, just a little bit smaller in profile than the, uh, than the three wood. Really nice club. One of the things I really like about PXG is the after sales service. So I'd had my three fairway and my five fairway for six months or so and I found that I was blocking them left. They weren't hooking, they were just starting left and finishing left of target. So I went back to see one of the fitters and what they did, they took the shaft out and it's got a slightly sort of different end on the end on the tip of the shaft. And when they turned it around 180 degrees, that meant that the club would sit three degrees flatter than normal. So they've just done that for me and we've got that in the three and the five fairway. Some great after sales there from the guys and that's really helped me from stop blocking it left. Now the sharp eyed amongst you might have noticed I had 15 clubs in the bag and the one I am going to interchange depending on where I'm playing is either my four iron or my hybrid. So let's have a look at the hybrid. Okay this is the 317 model from PXG, 317 being the sniper. Again similar looking crown, different shaft in this one though. I've got the Fujicura Pro 2.0 hybrid shaft. When I was fitted for this, we went for a one inch longer shaft than normal. So I thought that was interesting. A lot of people talk about going shorter. We actually found I hit this club straighter with a longer shaft. Now moving on to my four iron. The four iron is from the generation three 0311 range from PXG, but it is a different model. This is the 0311 XP, which is the most forgiving club that they do. Slightly thicker sole really nice to look down on. When you look down on it, it doesn't really look any different to the rest of the range, but it just looks really reassuring. Slightly bigger head perhaps, really nice club. When I was fitted for this, I've gone for one inch longer, which is what the fitter recommended. I'm just under six foot tall, so I'm not a particularly tall guy, but they went one inch longer, which was interesting, and three degrees upright. The previous clubs I've had were Titleist. I had AP2s twice, went down to the Titleist fitting center at St. Ives for both of those. We always went with the same length shaft, the standard shaft on those, but for those I was two degrees upright, so for this we've gone three. Now the shafts are interesting. These are the Acra Composite Titanium and Graphite shafts, 90 grams. Okay, now over the last few years I've suffered really badly from tennis elbows I've spoke about before. And I think part of that was the steel shafts when you're practicing on the driving range, hitting the mats, playing a lot of golf. So with these graphite shafts, these should give you a lot less you know, energy going through your, your body after you've hit the shot. And I've not had any trouble since I've gone with these. Also black shafts, I think they look pretty cool. Now I've got the same irons in the bag all the way from five iron up to gap wedge, which is 51 degrees. Now one of the things that really appealed to me about the PXG was this perimeter weighting system. Well, I've not seen that in any other clubs. And that allows the weights to be set in the heel for me to uh, stop me slicing the ball. But depending on your setup, those weights, some are weights, some are just screw caps, all the same colour, so they look really nice. That is going to help you out. I think that's a really clever design. Okay, I don't know why people haven't thought about that before. Now, I know PXG irons are expensive, but they're a bit like you know a good pair of shoes or a good watch. You're kind of paying for what you don't see. The steel on this has been forged five times. Lovely looking clubs. The 0311, as you can see here, the 0311 in the US Marine Corps is the Rifleman. Quite like that, liking these Marine Corps references. Again, the same Acra 90 gram shafts in all the irons. Again, one inch longer and three degrees upright. Had these clubs for about a year now. Really like them. They're gonna be in the bag for a long time. With the PXG irons, once you get past the nine iron, you start moving into the wedge and the gap. I've chose to go for those in the same model as my irons rather than go for them in the wedge range. Again, these are still one inch longer, three degrees upright. So my gap wedge is 51 degrees. I've then got a 56 degree wedge and a 60 degree wedge. The 56 has got 10 degrees of bounce. The 60 has got nine degrees of bounce. These are the 311 forge wedges. PXG do have some other wedges in the range. It was just that when I got fitted, these were the ones that were best for me. Last but not least, we've got the money maker. My PXG gunboat putter. Really nice head cover here. Nice magnets rather than Velcro. Really prefer that, really good. This is made from aircraft grade aluminium. It's called the gunboat. The gunboat being the naval attack vehicle. It's got six weights in the sole. They're adjustable. I'd had this for about six months or so. Um, I found I was just missing a few putts that are, you know, from short range or going a little bit left. Again, went for another fitting with the guys at PXG and we changed these to 
weights here into slightly heavier weights and that's given me a lot more stability through the stroke. Really good looking putter, nice white line there, pretty clean lines otherwise. I found when I had the one that was more square like the TaylorMade Spider when I was trying that one out, um, I was taking it back too square, I do have a slight arc on my stroke, I find this really good, I think the black shaft looks cool. We went for a 35 inch putter which is one inch longer than standard, we had a really interesting fitting, we were using Trackman, the guys were filming the ball rolling off the face as you can see in some of these pictures here, really thorough, I mean I left there with total confidence. In, uh, in the putter, we've got the super stroke grip there, the sort of mid-size super stroke, really like that. And again, I've got the shot scope in the end of there. I really love this putter. Oh, okay, that's 10 quid to dream for it. I think I've done pretty well getting through this video so far without that. So that's, that's uh, 10 pounds to charity, fair enough. Really nice looking putter. I think, as much as I'd like to say it's the driver, I think my putter is my favourite club. What's your favourite club? I'd be really interested to hear. Please put some comments below and let me know what your favourite club is and why. Okay, that's all the clubs in my bag. Let's see what else I've got in the bag. So what else is in the bag? Well, I've got two alignment sticks. Got a nice cover there as well, made by the guys at Hazard Golf. Really like that. Always important to keep those when you're practising. Got my golf show cap. Got to show you the logo. I've got a swing speed club in here as well. I'm working on an episode for the golf show, which is going to go in about a month's time, where we're going to be seeing if I uh, regularly use these, if I can increase my swing speed. So I've got one of those in the bag. Quite like these, because you've just got the one to carry with three interchangeable heads, rather than having to carry three clubs as the, um, some of the other makes have got. Well, at the moment at Fulford, there are two holes where Members are likely to be going in with a short and a wedge, so we've been asked to use a mat, so I carry a mat. I prefer one of those to the um, more sort of AstroTurf style mat. I've got my Bushnell TV4. Always use one of those. After the glove review we did in the previous episode of the golf show, I've got the Callaway Tour Authentic glove. That's the glove I'm going to wear this year. Obviously got some golf show logo balls there. This year I'm playing the Titleist Pro V1X, number 17. Got a couple of these little bags, this one's my valuables pouch, I'll put my phone in here so it doesn't get scratched in the bag. Got a Scotty Cameron pitch repairer and this is my lucky pitch marker, which if you can see that, that is my son Zach's handprints when he was very little, not that little, um, there was a company that makes these and that was Zach's signature at the time on the back. Um, I mark my putts like that and then if I need to move the ball I turn it over so I can see that I've moved my marker. That's really nice. I've got some resistance bands for warming up. One there and one for around the legs to activate those glutes and get those firing through. That's important to warm up before you play. I've got some snacks in here as well. Got some mixed nuts and some beef jerky. If Zach knows I've got that in my bag, it won't be there for much longer. I've got a little bag here from when I played at the Emirates Club in Dubai. I played there a couple of times, very lucky to do that, really nice. This is a bit of a first aid kit with antihistamine, ibuprofen, bite pens, plasters, that kind of thing. I found a protein bar. Oh. In this side of the bag, I've got my waterproofs. Always carry those in the UK. Uh, Galvin Green, I think they're the best on the market. And here in the bag I have got my big Nike winter mitts. These are getting a lot of use throughout the winter months. Nice snood and of course a golf show woolly hat. And then last but not least, got another bag here. This is Dream Flight, the chariot I was talking about earlier. I've got my selfie stick when I'm out there filming on the course. I've also got my golf show yardage book, scorecard holder, again by the guys at Hazard Golf. Nice little initials on there, so when it's in the old uh, skyrocket when I'm out on the course, I'm looking like one of those tour players. Love it. I really hope you enjoyed that episode of What's In My Bag. It's taken me a year or so to build up these clubs and I'm really happy with them. It'll be interesting to see through 2021 whether I do swap out the big dog or whether this is still in the bag for the rest of the year. I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you did, please give us a like. 
Um, add some comments down below. I'd love to know what clubs you're carrying this year. Are there any clubs that you're looking forward to trying out and testing? What are you most likely to swap out? Is it your putter? Is it your wedges? Your irons? Or your driver? So I'd really like to hear from you. That'd be great. Well, that's it from me, Paul. I'll see you next time on The Golf Show.